3,000. Now we're going to look at our ground reference maneuvers. Ground reference maneuvers, same question, right? A little easier to answer on this, but um, configuration airspeed and also altitude. One common mistake with this. What altitude do we want to get our ground reference? The ACS for single engine. So between 600 and 1,000 feet AGL. Uh, so what altitude are we? So what is our MFL elevation out here? Again, right about 800 to 1,000. Um, I like to do these at a thousand feet AGL. Um, it's it, it's more familiar. That's what we do our traffic patterns at, and it also allows an extra element of safety. Um, configuration and airspeed cruise. We don't want flap cruise airspeed. The only other question you really need to ask yourself about ground reference, because now we're referencing the ground. The performance maneuvers up there, we didn't care as long as we didn't bump airspace or whatever else. Um, but we were not doing anything with reference to the ground. Now we are. So the key thing to remember is that we enter on the downwind. Uh, think of a traffic pattern, right? What is the preferred method of entry to a traffic pattern? You went on the downwind. Um, so that's the same for ground weapons. While we're talking about that, let's talk about what is, what, what, what's going on with ground weapons. What are we really trying to do? Maintaining some kind of reference to the ground. 90% of these maneuvers is maintaining a radius around a point or a road. So that means we need to adjust our bank angle to keep a ground track the same. Um, we enter downwind. So what part of this wind condition is going to affect our turn to bump? Uh, we can get deep down into it, but no, but uh, we'll pay downwind. You have a tailwind. With a tailwind, you have the faster ground speed. With the faster ground speed, requires the steepest bank. Um, to maintain that radius. How do we know where the wind's coming from? Well, hopefully you paid attention when you left. The wind that at ASOP, Newark, Metis will tell you. Otherwise, you can look down and see if you see the corn or the field, the top of the crop being blown, smokestacks, flags, anything like that. Not a lot of wind today. We can tune in. I'm good. See what's going on there at uh, regional. Indianapolis Regional Airport. Automated weather observation. One six five zero Zulu weather. Wind zero four zero at six visibility one. Airport airspeed. So basically it's north. Here in Indiana, it's easier to pick the the, the cardinal direction of map is close to north, south, east, west. All of our roads, our fields, all of our referencing to the ground is basically a giant grid um, of the cornfield and country road. Downwind. Winds are out of the north, so that means I need to be headed to the south. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn to the south. First one we're going to do is turn around a point. You can turn around any point you want. There's no requirement. However, if you find a four-way stop, crossroad, something of that nature, it is so much easier. Because now instead of one giant turn, you turn it into four little turns. And you want to cross each road at the same distance from that intersection. So your goal would be about a quarter to a half mile from that uh, intersection or that point. We're basically replicating kind of a traffic pattern. About a half mile works out pretty well. Um, coming up here, I've got one right here. So kind of in the middle of these is going to put me right at about that half mile. I don't know if you can see that from there, but there's my point. I'm starting on the downward so I, in theory, my bank will be the steepest. However, just do whatever it takes to cross that next road at the same distance. So I'm going to start that turn. Looks like about uh, three light poles over from the property is where I want to cross there. Making small adjustments to your bank angle to make sure that you cross that road um, at the same distance. Kind of comes about a light pole in from that pond map. Always while you want to run, glancing at your airspeed and altitude are where you want to be. Altitude is the most common neglected, omitted, forgotten about aspect of this maneuver. As you get into the upland, your bank should theoretically decrease because your ground speed is lower. Now I'm going to go just on the other side of 70 here, right kind of where that grass uh, meets the on-ramp, up-ramp there. So again, we enter downwind. Just make it happen. I'm going to keep it at 1,900 for 1,000 feet above the ground. And one turn, you're good. Now, for practice, it's good to do several turns and kind of get the feel for it. Um, with this, every day is different. Every day the winds are changing. 
even while you're doing the maneuver, the winds are changing. Um, so it's a very dynamic maneuver. As we come here across the same spot we did when we started, we're going to go back to the south on the downwind, and we're going to demonstrate that turns across the road. Do uh, you want to find a road? Perpendicular to the wind. So you fly downwind, you need a road that goes perpendicular to you. And that turn across the road is nothing more than a turnaround point. You just switch direction halfway through. So I'm coming up on a field line with a country road that goes that way. We'll use that. Again, I like to start to the left. And then you make a turn. Once you cross that road, you both be wings level with the wings parallel to that road. You're going to switch directions and make the right turn, and you can keep doing that until you're comfortable. One turn to the left, one turn to the right is what is required if that maneuver is selected as one of the ground reference maneuvers. Alright, so here comes our road. Again, we're downward, past the ground feet meets very the steepest bank. So I will link across this road. I'm going to start that turn. I want to again go about a quarter to a half mile. Half mile kind of makes it a little bit easier. All the country roads are about a mile apart. Um, continue that turn. Now as we get to what here in a crosswind situation, that wind is now fighting us, pushing us away from the road, but we have to be more patient to get back to it. So that means our bank will most likely have to decrease. We need to shallow it out and just be patient. We want to, as soon as we cross that road, we're going to roll wing level and our wings will be exactly parallel with this road. Again, just be patient, whatever it takes. Here we go, we're crossing the road. Boom, wings level, and I'm going to start the other direction. Now we're upwind. Lowest ground speed means lowest bank. And we want to do the same distance we did with that turn with this turn. So just kind of feel it out, get yourself there, be patient. Allow a nice shallow bank to get that distance out. Because as soon as we get to about here, that crosswind, direct crosswind, the wind is pushing us back to the road. And you know what? We've got nothing other than bank to make sure that we get to where we need to be. I climbed up a little bit with that, so I'm going to correct my altitude, come back down. You can feel it's kind of getting pushed a little faster. But again, be patient. Our goal here, boom, cross it, wings level. That completes the maneuver. We're out of road, but we can continue on. All right, climb back up to a safe altitude. There's also a rectangle port. We, I like to just say that that's our traffic pattern. You do that every day when you come in and land. 